All right, so what I wanna to talk to you about is just the retirement procedures. So we have a couple different criterias for this. We have AGRs, uh, we also have technicians, right, that are military, and we have just guardsmen, all right? Primarily, Sergeant Miller, uh, she's the POC for retirements now. So this is her lane, and what we are looking for is when you come down to sit, sit down to talk to us about retirement, we're going to look at your points. So we're gonna pull what's called a surf report. Um, in the surf report, we're looking for you to make sure that you have a good year each of your years, because I can't tell you the amount of times that I've had people come to me and they're like, okay, I'm totally ready to retire. I hit my 20 in December. I'm like, uh, nope, sorry. Last year you had you know, 40 points. You didn't have 50 points, so you're short a year. So that's why you'll see in your emails once a year to review your R&R. Right? You get that email that's very important to look at it to make sure that you have enough points to qualify for a good year. And if you are concerned about it whatsoever, if you're not sure your points, you're not sure how many good years you have, that's where you need to come down and talk to Sergeant Miller, Sergeant Mamertz, uh, Sergeant Slamba, and we can go through that thoroughly and make sure that you do have a good year. So with that being said, um, <clears throat> we're going to sit down with everybody, but AGRs specifically, Sergeant Eshelman is the POC for AGRs and technicians. He will sit down with you and go through your points to look at your active duty time frame to make sure that you have enough active points. All right, and enough active years, I should say. All right, so there's two different votes for that. So what happens is after we sit down, we look at your surf report, we look at your points, then what we're going to do is come up with a retirement date. So say, say you have uh, 25 years and you're ready to retire, uh, awesome, we're gonna pick a date. So we're gonna sit down, if it's one December, perfect. We expect you to come to FSS a year to six months out from your retirement date. And that is for your benefit, so that you're not scrambling at the last minute to turn in your sea bag or to you know, figure out your pay if you're turning 60 soon, anything like that. So six months to a year out is when you're gonna come and see us, all right? Now, EGRs work a little bit different, so We'll sit down and we'll also look at your retirement. However, there's a couple things that AGRs specifically need to have before you come meet with us. One is going to be an amendment, amended order and you're going to get that from Sergeant Eshelman. He's gonna request that through the state because your end date for your AGR order has to match your date that you choose for your retirement. Okay, simple as that and that's for pay purposes. So you need your amended order and the next thing that you're going to need for your AGR retirement is you're going to need a pay form called a DD form 2656. Now, traditional guardsmen will need that same form, that 2656, once you turn the age of 60, or for those that are collecting a little earlier based on deployments, which we'll get into shortly too. I don't wanna confuse you. So that's a pay form that you're going to need. So with both of those for AGRs, then at that point is when we go into the program VPC through my purse and we officially apply for retirement. Just by a show of hands, who in here has applied for retirement through VPC? Okay, and for those, if you don't mind me calling you out, how easy of a process was it? Pretty simple, right? Takes literally like five minutes. So as long as you fill out all the correct information and that you are applying uh, with all your points and everything all in a row, right? So our job in FSS is to make sure that you guys who have put in over 20 years dedicated time for your country that you have everything lined up for you, which is a major part of why we wanted to have this briefing. It's all about you. You put in 20 years. You deserve to make sure that everything goes smooth for you at the end, okay? All right. Okay, so when you apply through VPC, um, one of the final steps in there, they list a POC. There's also, they also ask you about a um, uh, ceremony date. They also ask you about uh, uh, cere um, excuse me, retirement binders. So let me just explain those two things. So in VPC, it doesn't know that you're not different than active duty. So it's basing it on is if you were an active duty person who they have the official ceremonies and whatnot. So we always click yes for both of those for you to just keep in mind. And that is just to make sure that we receive your retirement binders in time before you retire. So it's a nice gesture from your commander that can be presented to you. Okay, so if you're wondering what that is. 
Um, then at the very bottom of the application in VPC, it's, uh, it asks to list a POC. Your new POC is Tech Sergeant Heather Miller. And then the unit commander is who it gets routed to next. So by a show of hands, who in here is familiar with EPRs? Okay, great, because this kind of works just like an EPR as far as the routing. So it's gonna go to, this, to the commander for approval because this is a voluntary thing. We are all voluntarily retiring. So it has to be approved by the commander. So the commander will approve it. Then after that, it goes to the wing commander and then it goes to ARPC. ARPC is the final hierarchy for us that produces your official retirement order. They're the ones who get you paid, they get you your order, and they get you your retirement certificates along with your American flag, okay? All right, so after VPC, um, the next thing that we do is, after you apply for retirement with us, then you're gonna go and see Master Sergeant Paolini. He was the retention manager there that was here earlier. You're gonna go and see him for an out-processing checklist. And the reason that you're gonna see him, um, I actually changed the process within the past two years because I would find that people would out-process through the unit once they're trying to apply, uh, uh, sorry, once they're actually retiring, they go through everybody in the unit, then they go see the retention manager at the very end. Well, darn, I mean, you just signed up for a four-year uh, gig like a year ago. You still got three more years till you can collect your retirement, right? Because he was just saying that for the post-9-11 GI Bill, remember earlier he was talking about you have to stay for four years if you transfer it. So we decided to change it to make him the front runner because at this point, if there's anything for education benefits, he's gonna be able to let you know yay or nay for retirement. So that's why he's first in case you ever wondered that portion of it because we're all interconnected in FSS with our roles and to make sure that you guys are taken care of. That makes sense? Okay. Uh, next slide. Okay, great. So that's it for just the formal portion of applying for retirement. It's super easy. The only hard part is really on you as the member with making sure your ducks are in a row. And by saying that is making sure that you're seeing the right people to get your ducks in a row. So start with Sergeant Miller. She is your POC for retirements. She can make sure that her folks, Sergeant Momerts and Sergeant Slamba, can look at your points and make sure you have enough points for a good year and help you out with figuring out your retired pay. There's also different applications online for, through VPC, which I think I have a couple slides in that a little later <clears throat> that will uh, show you exactly how much you're gonna start getting paid for retirement. So there's a whole plethora of things that we can get into with it. All right, any questions on that process? Yes. I just want to stop the one point that I had problem with. Yep. That is correct. And you don't have to worry about applying for your retirement. Mm -hmm. It's an automatic, actually. So I uh, thank you for bringing up this, an excellent point. So a lot of people do wonder about the retired reserve. So all of us, and it's a great, except for AGRs, so AGRs, plug yours, everybody else, um, you go into the retired reserves automatically, which is an awesome thing because your pay keeps increasing until you start collecting. So say you retire at 40 for, as a traditional guardsman and you don't collect till age 60, guess what? You're still getting those pay raises until you turn 60. So that's pretty awesome. Yes, sir? Doesn't that depend on when you came into service? Nope, everybody goes into the retired reserve as of right now. We have to do a formal request to have you not enter into the retired reserve. Any other questions on that? Yes, ma'am. Yes, there sure is. I'm glad you asked that. That's in my next briefing. <laughs> I'll cover that shortly here. Anyone else? All right, well, we're gonna go, oh, yes. You get 15, yes, you do, yes. Yep, 15 membership points per year you obtain. Yep, but remember, um, so if you do all of your drills and you get the membership points, that doesn't equal always to 50 points. So just keep in mind, and especially let your guardsmen know, um, tell them to look at their points every year. It's very important, and if they're not quite sure how to read it or where to go, tell them to come to FSS, because that's our job. We need to make sure you guys are smart on where you're at for your benefits.